good afternoon or evening or maybe it's morning that you're watching this i don't know uh it's the day of art music and creative support remember that all of your donations today up to a thousand dollars are going to be matched you can text create to uh 210-796-5188 to do that and also this website right here or just go to heartsneyart.org and click the donate button um it's time for some art are you ready hopefully it's after school or after work you're home you need a little creativity this is it um i first found out about this type of art actually a couple years ago from izzy who's our donor or our um director of donor experience she was on the richard wilmore show and did this i'd never heard of it before um this is what we made on my show and i was scared and shocked at how awesome it turned out and how easy it was and we do this in the hospital um with patients because it's so easy and it's so exciting because you never know how this is going to turn out and you never you can't you can't plan this and it's always beautiful and it's always a surprise so hannah's been begging to do this for a while so today is the day i'm going to bring hannah on right now well i'm going to bring hannah's <laughs> hand of, of of canvas. Hi, <laughs> Hi, Richard. Thank you so much for having me again. Of course. Um, I'm excited to, to watch you do this. This is it's like magic to me, and that's why yeah. I love this. What are the um what do people need to do this? Well, um, I'm gonna try to make as many hand gestures as I can since Good. you guys can't see my face. Um, so let me go ahead and break down what we need and maybe why we need it. Um, of course obviously you're going to need some canvas here and a really great starter is an eight by 10. So eight by 10 canvas. I got a 10 pack at Michael's for super cheap, especially right now. Cause I think they have a sale right now. Um, and then I also have these, which I've used before for little mini pet portraits for hearts need art. Um, I have these tiny things. So we have two types. Um, you can also use, um, what you call it, a uh, canvas board. So they're flat. They're not actually canvas. They're flat and they're super, super cheap. So you can use that as well. Um, you're going to need three or no, let's make that four different types of things to mix into your paint. And I will go over the process with that. The very first thing is going to be glue. So I just poured some out. This is just plain old Elmer's glue. Um, you're going to need something called Floetrol or Flow for short. And if I walk back here, I can show you the bottle. We have a gigantic bottle here, Floetrol. So you're going to need a little bit of that. Well, a lot of that, actually. That's why we have the big giant jug. And water. So you can use just plain old tap water if you're just playing around and having fun with it. But distilled water um, for longer lasting work is probably going to be best for this as well. Um, so those are going to be the three main things, but the really amazing thing that will give you this kind of effect, these cells, ta-da, here's another example. See those cells right there? It's going to, that, those are actually you made using um, silicon oil. So I have here, it's actually made for acrylic pouring, but as long as it says 100% silicon lubricant, you are great. Um, this is what you want to create that fantastic cell effect. Um, so that's going to be it as far as like the main things you're going to need. Um, this here, you'll see that it's in a tin. Um, it should be flat. Mine is not flat. I couldn't really find one at the store. But if you have a flat surface, that would be best um, just to catch all of the paint because it's going to be very drippy, very flowy. Um, you're going to need some cups, of course. Some wooden sticks or something to stir everything together um what else some napkins of course super important and a straw so straw and you may or may not see me use um this this is a palette knife um this is optional definitely gonna want this straw though so if you have one handy please be sure and have that um as far as supplies go um we're good um if i mention anything else i'll let you know actually these right here, tacks. Do you guys see these? I put three, so two on each corner and then one on the end just to save some tacks. Um, I did this so that it actually stands up against the surface that you have. 
So you can, of course, use um, a cardboard, but I do have this tin foil right here. So let's go ahead and get started. I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and show you the colors that I have made already. Um, and then um, I'm gonna show you guys how to make uh, how to make it yourself. And I'm going to mix this gold here. Um, I have a bunch of colors back there. And what I want you guys to do um, is if you want to participate, I would love to hear your color suggestions. Um, I'm going to move my camera real quick so you guys can see this. But I have a rainbow of colors back there. I don't know how much of that you guys can see. But I have pretty much every color you can think of back there and I would absolutely love your suggestions. Um, I would like for you guys to guide our paintings today. I have a lot of canvas, so I'm just gonna keep on going for as long as I can. Um, Richard, I may need your guidance in um, <laughs> keeping track of time because you know how, you guys know how good I am at that. Um, so here we have black, it's already mixed up. I have white and I have this really, really pretty cobalt blue. So those are going to be our basics. And while you guys are thinking about colors and submitting your colors, I am going to first move these canvas aside real quick and mix for you my gold. So let me move this. I'm going to set that down right there. So I did mention the three different main mediums. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this glue. We're gonna want to add 50-50 glue and flow, flow trawl. So because we want a good amount of this, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up to the line. So just about to the line. So I was looking at this line here. I think I'll fill it up a little bit more with glue, but 50-50 is about the approximate ratio for that. So there's the first one. I've got my flow. Remember, I said 50-50, so probably fill it up a few notches, keeping an eye on that. There we go. That looks about right. So there's my 50-50 flow and glue. I'm going to grab my popsicle stick, and you're going to want to mix it before you add anything else into there. Mix that together. I'm going to keep this stirring stick assigned to this cup. So whatever color this or the or this color or this uh, stick is going to turn that color. I'm going to keep that there. Scrape the sides like that. And now we get to add our wonderful color. Don't forget to add your color suggestions in there. And Richard, I, since I can't really see the comments, I may need your help with that. If anybody comments, please let me know. But for now, let's get that glue, let's get that gold in there. Now, Folk Art is a pretty good brand. Um, if you're wondering which, um, which acrylic brands to use, um, Folk Art's a good one. It's very, very flowy. And we're going to want to add about a quarter of what we have in there. So your best guess is just to estimate how much you put in there. And of course, that takes practice. Um, but do your best. Estimate about a quarter of what you have in there. Kind of mix it up. You guys will get to see. Some colors, not all of them, but some colors and some brands um, are a little bit chunky. So you might see a few like color chunks in there somewhere. So keep on mixing if you see that. Luckily for me, this brand happens to be a good one. It's very flowy. Colors like, or I'm sorry, brands like Arteza or um, uh, what is it? Liquitex tend to be a little bit um, thicker. So you might have to stir in there a little bit more. Now that's a gold color, but I think we can do better than that. I'm going to add a little bit more. Now, consistency is gonna be pretty important to these paintings, to the flow of our paintings. So I'm looking for the consistency of melted ice cream. So in a second here, after I'm finished mixing everything, I am gonna take out my stick 
and look at it and if it reminds me of melted golden ice cream then i'm good and if not if it's a little bit too thick that's what we have that water for so mix it mix it mix it this looks pretty good um, i want you guys to be able to see that it's a little hard to do that looks like pretty watery ice cream to me so i think we're good I'm going to set this aside. And Richard, do we have any color suggestions? Because if not, I'm going to jump into, oh, let's see, aqua. No suggestions? All right. That is A-OK -okay because I love choosing colors. Okay. Got some aqua here or teal. It's actually teal. So remember, about a quarter. But then again, Liquitex is a thicker brand, so I am going to be a little bit more reserved on that. Hannah, we have a request for purple from Junior. Awesome, purple. Got it. If there's any more, please let me know. Purple. Cool, look at that. That is beautiful. I love this. Look at that teal. Teal is one of my favorite colors. But of course, if you ask me what my favorite color is, I'm gonna say all of them, or most of them at least. Okay, so I set that aside. I'm gonna put some purple in there. If I can find my purple, that would be great. I'm actually looking for it right now. Here it is. Got it. If anybody has a surprising color suggestion, please let us know that. It's always really nice to have like a, a, a different mix of colors, like maybe something that contrasts. A very eclectic mix would be nice. Look at that purple. Beautiful. So I am thoroughly mixing it and I don't see any little chunks of color. So that is great. Okay. Now, do we have one more color suggestion? Because I would like to actually make, make another one, demonstrate another one for you guys with an empty cup. Okay, orange it is then. So we're gonna, unless you guys um, have another suggestion, then that's totally fine. So I'm gonna pour my glue in here again. I can do orange, I can do pink, I can do um, like a rosy red, I have I have a dandelion yellow back there. I have a fire truck red. It's really, really bright. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. I'm not gonna wait for that one. I'm gonna add, once again, 50-50 flow and glue. So there's not really that much in there. Pour it until I see. About 50-50, there we go. Now, the reason I use Flow, and I, I have heard of a bunch of other brands that I've, I've never used, but Flow is actually really good because um, it the ratio in which you use it doesn't seem to matter too much. And that's really just something that I've heard from other people. So it's really pretty um, user-friendly and beginner-friendly. So I could technically pour a lot more flow in here and it will turn out fine. And I've done that before. Really what flow does, it just, it just spreads the color. It thins it out. And the glue is there to bind everything together. So as long as you have a good amount of glue in there, you're good. Cool, so that's nice and mixed. And... I know I said orange, but is there anything else 
you guys would like me to add. All right, going for it. And remember, we're adding about roughly a quarter of what's in there, one fourth. Let's set that aside. If I need to add more, that's totally fine. And probably whenever I'm finished mixing all of this, I'm gonna go back and check the consistency of all of them. And I will add the water to it if I need to. All right, that is twice melted ice cream. Very watery. So since it's a little bit more watery than I would like it to be, I am going to add a little bit more of the color. It's thicken it up a bit. It's also going to make the color much more rich too. There we go. Better. Not perfect, but better. Let's check that purple. Let's see what we got. That's very flowy. There we go. Now this is the consistency we're looking for. That's the ice cream right there. Cool. So that very last component, silicon oil. So let's go ahead and do that. I've already added it to um, my black and white and blue but I'm gonna go ahead and add it to everything else. I would say one to three drops is more than enough. So two drops there. Two drops in our teal. I accidentally did three, so maybe I'll just do one. Oh, yep, I was right. I aimed for one and I did two. And since this one, this orange it doesn't really have nearly as much as the rest of them I'm gonna go ahead and just put one there now I'm not going to mix all of that up I am just going to take this very carefully and just stir it very very minimally and then leave it alone I'm gonna do that for each and every one stir it minimally Maybe even cross it. So do a little X and then that's it. Like that for every single color. I cannot wait to actually layer everything together. It looks really cool. It's also going to be very messy. Something that I did forget to mention earlier is that it may be wise to maybe put a drop cloth around your entire space, especially if it's a space that's not really dedicated to, um, to flow art. Here we go. Are you guys ready? Because I'm ready. I am going to take a nice brand new clean cup, like so. And actually, let me move this again. Let me set this down because I want you, I want you guys to see me pour this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with white. It doesn't really matter, at least as far as I know. It doesn't really matter which color you start with. Just know that some colors, like black, for example, um, and probably the teal as well, are gonna sink down to the bottom. And I haven't really studied it enough yet, but it doesn't, but it seems like it matters a little bit. See that? It just sinks right down there. So let's see if we can put a lighter color on top of that. Well, actually purple's gonna sink down too. See that? You can whirl it and swirl it like I just did, or you can put everything um, just straight in the middle. I'm gonna put some gold on top of that. Now I want to show you the difference between um, what four colors look like versus um, five colors. So this one right here that I'm about to show you, it's got four colors layered on top of it. So you can see, um, is, that, is that four? I think I lost track already, that's funny. I see teal, I see black, I see 
um, gold. So this is actually three colors. That's what that looks like. This next one, however, is much more crazy. Five colors in this one. So I see white, pink, teal, um, orange, white, pink, teal, orange, and gold. So five colors. Does get pretty crazy. Um, I've put four colors in there already, so I'm going to leave it at that. And now that I've put one of each of my four colors, I'm going to repeat the process. Doesn't necessarily have to be in that particular order, but I want to keep it consistent. It took me a while to sort of figure out just how much paint I would need to put. And I'm still kind of learning as I go. There we go, last color. Cannot wait to see how this turns out. I'm going to be doing the flip method. So I'm going to take this. So I have my canvas here. I'm going to set my canvas on top of my color, or I'm sorry, on top of my cup, like that. And I'm going to flip it. It's exactly what the name implies. I'm going to let that sit for maybe another five seconds. Let everything settle. I'm going to move these guys out of the way. I will utilize that space afterwards. Now ready, set, about to watch it, and go! Beautiful! See it's leaning a little bit. I'm going to catch it. I'm going to set this cup aside. Do you see those cells forming? Those beautiful cells. I'm going to make it go towards the edges. I'm not intentionally making it go over the edge just yet. And later on, I'd be happy to tell you all about a little trick that I like to do um, with old canvases. And a little trick that I like to do with... Um, if you have space that the uh, paint didn't quite reach. So I'm letting it flow this way again because I'm loving what this is doing. Look at that. I have a little bit of space over here. So rather than tipping it the other way, I'm gonna actually just pour a little bit more over here. A little bit more there. And then I have this corner here that's definitely not covered. I'm gonna go to each corner and just pour a little bit on there. And then after that, I'm gonna take my um, straw and I'm gonna blow on it, blow on different sections. So, dirty fingers, I'm gonna grab my napkin. Now, I do want some of that to tip over the edge over here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a good spot right there that isn't covered. So got my straw. I could always put more paint over there as well. But honestly, I really love this. In some instances, you may want to guide the direction of where your cells go. Um, and you might be able to do that a little bit. Personally, I don't really want to touch this, um, so maybe the next time around I'll sort of like use a straw to blow some of these off to the side. And if you have enough of that silicon oil, um, then that's perfect. Um, it'll, it'll bubble up from the bottom there um, after you blow everything away that's on, on the top. So I am going to show you my other techniques on the next one because I really don't want to do anything with this one. Um, it does have some spaces on the side here that definitely need more paint or don't have any paint on them at all. Um, I'm going to let them be for now. I'll leave them alone for now. And maybe on these smaller ones I will show you how you can um, put some on the side. So next one here, I have two more canvas. 
two more little canvas and I do have more big ones. I can definitely show you more with the big ones. So I'm gonna set this cup aside. This one is pretty much empty. Um, and since our canvas are smaller, these two canvases are smaller, um, that's totally okay. I'm gonna get a brand new cup. I say brand new, but I uh, cleaned it out because I don't like wasting cups. Did clean it out. So any color combinations that you guys can suggest for me? I'm gonna go ahead and just pour the white real quick, but I would love some more color suggestions. And if I need to mix another color right now, that's totally fine. I totally don't mind doing that. I think I will do, let's add that orange into there. You guys excited for Halloween? I'm excited for Halloween. I still need to do decorations. So speaking of Halloween, I'm going to add black. That was white. That was orange. I'm going to add black. I'm already liking the way the black mixes in with the orange there. Green and blue. Awesome. Got it. That will be for the next round. I'm going to add green and blue the next time around. There we go. Perhaps I will add a little bit more orange to this particular painting, or these two particular paintings. We really don't need nearly as much for these two. Oh, I notice how I uh, little, dropped a little bit there. That's okay. It's going to be covered. So don't worry about that. I think I'm going to make just a little bit more. It's already mixing in a spooky way. Is anybody out there decorated yet? For Halloween? I need to do that. I want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to move this. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to add a splash of purple in here. Just a splash. Let's see how much of that purple actually shows up. All right, so I'm going to show you guys another method. This is going to be a pouring method. So I'm going to start in the corner and pour. Same thing with this side. Okay. I see a little bit of purple starting to peek through. Oh, yay, we have a lot. I can actually grab another canvas. I don't know where I put it, but I can grab it. Oh, man, we have a lot of that purple. This is cool. I'm moving it from side to side. We have a lot left over, so I might set that one aside. Perhaps use it on another one. I see a little bit of that white paint popping through. I think that orange really sunk to the bottom, so I'm going to pour some more out. I really want that orange to peek through some more. Okay, so for anyone who would like to see what you can do for the sides here, you can take your dirty fingers and just sort of tap a little bit of the color onto the side. So tap a little there, tap a little there. I'm not, and the reason I want to tap is because I don't really want it to mix too much. Now, keeping this set down will be ideal. So, tap a little there. I think I might show you a technique in which I add another color on top of it and then use a palette knife to move that color around. Now, here, 
I poured this here because I wanted that color to cover the sides here, cover those corners. It needed a little bit extra. So I am going to use a straw and I'm going to be pushing that color into the side there. And I'm doing that because I want it to blend. Same thing going the opposite way. You can do that too. Pushed it over the edge. I think, I think that's okay. That, looks, that doesn't look too bad. I will put a little bit of teal on the side here so you guys can see how, what that looks like. Not too bad though. I'll do a little bit here before showing you guys that palette technique. Palette knife technique. There, not too bad. I'm really loving all of that. I really do love that. So, perhaps I, um, theoretically, am not happy with the colors that come out. You can still add a little bit of color. Take your spoon or your wooden stick here. Add a few drops to it. That silicone is going to work wonders. And then you're going to go back to your original color or your original mixture, I should say, and add a little on top of that or around it. It can even just be a few drops. Take your straw. Push it around. Not too shabby. Now where's that palette knife of mine? I can take this and let's maybe add some more teal, perhaps to the side here. Drizzle a little bit right there. Maybe a little more than that. You can take this knife and swipe. Now, I'm not gonna want to angle it at all. If at all possible, keep it flat. See that? Let the cells do the work for you. All you did was give it a little start. Now, actually, instead of touching that again, I'm going to Notice how I blew um, air into the center of this area and it really spread it out. Flatten that, use a flat edge. There. I'm happy with this one. Super happy with these two. So Richard, do we have time for another tray? I've got a whole two more trays set up. Uh, you have about, well, about five minutes. Five minutes. Let's go. All right. I'm going to set this down underneath or to the side, actually. All right, then. Let's get this part started. If we have time to do two, that would be great. So, I heard mention of using green. So, let me go ahead and I'm going to add this green to my white. So we have time for a little bit of that. But first, let me reserve a little bit of this white and set it off to the side. I'm just going to do the white on the bottom here. So, 
So, white. This is going to be that first layer. And then I'm going to add green to this area down here, or to this cup here, the one that was originally my white cup. There we go. Got that green. So since we only have five minutes, I'm just going to wing it. White and green. And let's see, let's do like a pop of color. Um, purple. And gold. This is going to be a very springy picture. White, purple, gold. What else? I definitely want more than that. White, purple, gold, teal. This, this is going to be a little, a little wild. A little bit wild, but I am A-OK -okay with that. And because we want this color to really flow off the page, off the canvas, that's okay. I think that's a good amount. All right, you guys, I'm going to do this method again, where we flip it and let it sit for a couple seconds. I'm super excited to see what that looks like. Okay, ready? One, two, wait, wait. I like how I psych myself up and then forget a step. Okay, one, two, three, and go. Ooh, guys, look at those colors. Let's set that aside. These are beautiful. You can see them forming. That beautiful teal is coming out. See a lot of that teal actually, that is beautiful. My hands are getting very messy, but I am totally 100% okay with that. Ooh, look at that. Super happy that green was a great suggestion. So happy I have that. You guys, this makes me so happy. So, I guess to finish this one off, since I don't think we'll have enough time for that other canvas, but to finish this one off, I'll add perhaps a swipe of orange, just to add some pops of color. So Hannah, while you're doing mm -hmm. that, that's obviously a ton of paint that you're using. How long mm -hmm. do these usually take to dry? And like, what's your mm -hmm. recommendation for, for the drying process? So, of course, have a good spot where um, you can lay it flat. And flat is going to be very important. So um, I have a nice little area underneath my desk reserved for these things. And they're just going to sit and they're just going to be there. Um, they usually take about 24 hours, but I would give it a little bit more time than that. Um, actually, let me do this real quick. Um, so I'd say 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure it's flat and don't touch mm -hmm. it. Don't move it. Let it sit. I know. It's, until it's completely dry. Mm -hmm. As tempting as it's going to be to move it, um, please don't. Yes. Um, yeah. Let me swipe real quick and then that will be it. And you have, Hannah also has um, multiple days a week if you are interested in, in having a tutorial on this or many different kinds of art. Hannah's amazing at at using watercolors and acrylics and crayons and she's done art classes with just pencil and paper. Um, what days are you available, Hannah? Yeah, I am available uh, Mondays and Wednesdays and Thursdays, various times, um, usually in the afternoon, but we have a couple slots in the morning as well. 10 o'clock is the earliest. 
Now you can go to heartsneedart.org slash virtual arts. I had virtual sessions up there before and that was wrong. <laughs> so if you were trying to go there to, to do a class and you couldn't get there, my apologies, it's virtual arts. That's what happens when you wake up too early. And so, <laughs> here, let's watch and I do that. Also, um, if you love this and you want these to continue our day of uh, celebrations and being able to have artists and musicians and writers available seven days a week. We of course need your help if you text create to 210-796-5188. We have an, an anonymous donor today who's willing to match all of your donations up to a thousand dollars today. So that could be a huge, huge benefit to us if you help us with that. I love that, Hannah. Thank you. I'm so happy with this. I love um, doing, I, so what's the difference? Is there a difference between poor art and flow art? Is it the same thing? Um, as far as I know, it's the same thing. Yeah, poor art, flow poor. art. Yeah, I, I use them interchange interchangeably, but if they're long, if, if that's wrong, then please let us know. I don't, I, you know what? We're just gonna go with that word right. <laughs> oh yeah. Go with that. There's Hannah, so much fun. You're the best. Um, schedule your appointment with Hannah at heartsneedart.org slash virtual arts. Coming up in the five o'clock hour, we are going to play a game, our favorite. Name that uh, song with Megan coming up around five o'clock. I'm gonna take a quick little break. I'm gonna get more coffee and we'll be back in a little bit. Megan, or Hannah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, bye.